హే గైస్ వెల్కమ్ బ్యాక్ టు సృష్టి టెక్ అకాడమీ ఇఫ్ యూఆర్ ఇన్ ద ప్రాసెస్ ఆఫ్ లర్నింగ్ స్ప్రింగ్ ఆర్ వర్కింగ్ ఇన్ స్ప్రింగ్ బూట్ డెవలప్మెంట్ దెన్ దిస్ వీడియో ఇస్ డెఫినెట్లీ ఫర్ యూ టుడే వి ఆర్ గోయింగ్ టు ఎక్స్ప్లోర్ ది టాప్ టెన్ స్ప్రింగ్ బూట్ ఫీచర్స్ దట్ ఆర్ ఆల్మోస్ట్ యూస్డ్ ఇన్ ఎవ్రీ రియల్ టైమ్ అప్లికేషన్స్ they are also important in interviews and project development if you already know this feature understand how it works and if you have used it in your project then feel proud and give a pat on your back because you are on the right track now let us get started guys these are the top 10 spring boot features that we are going to discuss now please understand i am not going to go in detail by showing the application but i have got code snippets with which i will explain what is the purpose of each feature of course for few feature i have created applications and i have added them as youtube videos you can go and watch them i will also tell you for what and all i have got the videos you can go and watch them now let us see what are all the features auto configuration starter dependencies embedded server built in testing support actuator dev tools profiles externalized configuration built in validation easy integration with security okay now let us discuss about these features one by one first feature auto configuration this is the main and important feature for which we have moved on to spring boot Spring Boot auto configures the beans based on the dependencies that you have added. The main class in any Spring Boot application is annotated with at Spring Boot application annotation. This annotation is a combination of component scan at configuration at enable auto configuration. This enable auto configuration annotation is responsible for configuring the beans based on the dependencies what is the meaning of it let's say i have added spring web as a dependency for creating rest apis or creating web application in this case tomcat server will be automatically added to your application the next one spring data jpa the moment i add spring data jpa as a dependency the data source and the entity manager needed for my application see these are classes the beans needed for my application will be configured automatically next spring security the moment i add spring security as a dependency to my application by default spring boot will create a login page and a logout page for this application it will generate a username with the name user and auto generate the password so based on the dependencies that you have added in your spring boot application spring will configure the beans this is the first feature the second feature is starter dependencies spring boot provides pre defined dependency groups called starters which are added in pom.xml guys if you are creating a spring application just by using maven without spring boot then you need to manually add the dependencies by going and searching it from maven central repository if dependency a depends on another dependency b then it is your work that you need to add both of them this was the biggest issue when you were creating applications using spring with the help of maven but with spring boot it is reduced spring boot has got its own predefined set of starters it is similar to when you want to order something from a restaurant you pick and choose the menu items and click submit where the items are getting added to the cart similarly when you want to create a spring boot project you can pick and choose the dependencies that you want which are picked up from the starter dependencies and automatically added to your project few common starters are given over here spring boot starter web which is used for rest apis and web application spring boot starter data jpa this is used for performing crud operations with the database 
completely for database access. Spring Boot Starter Security for adding authentication and authorization to your application. Spring Boot Starter Test for testing your application. Okay. The next feature, Embedded Server. The moment you add Spring Web as a dependency, automatically Embedded Tomcat Server will be added to your application. You don't have to deploy your API as a WAR file. You can just create it as a JAR application. While running it, you can run it just like how you run your Java application. Java-JAR, the JAR file name. Or if you are running it using Maven, then you can give this particular command. MVN Spring Boot colon run. MVN your application name colon run. How will you access this application? From the browser, the default port number of Tomcat server is 8080. You can simply give localhost colon 8080. That's it. The next feature. Build-in testing support. It is very easy to test a Spring Boot application. It has got support for frameworks like JUnit, Markito, Mark MVC. The dependencies that are needed for JUnit and Markito are added already to the Spring Boot application. By default, the Spring Boot Starter Test dependency will be added and the corresponding file also will be created. As a developer, it is your duty that you need to go and add the test cases. A simple example is given over here. This particular class is created by default. This is one of the important feature of Spring Boot. The next one is Actuator. Actuator is used for monitoring your application and it provides health checks for your application. It has got certain production ready features like health, getting the health, metrics, logs, ENV, etc. And of course the corresponding monitoring endpoints are also available. To perform the health checks and monitoring of your application, it is enough that you add actuator as a dependency to your application and these are the rest endpoints actuator slash health, actuator slash metrics, actuator slash info. So many rest endpoints are available together with actuator. Guys, I have also created a video how to add actuator to your application and perform monitoring and health checks. You can please go and watch that to understand about it in detail. The next one is dev tools. This is one other interesting feature of Spring Boot. Whenever you are working with a Spring Boot application, if you are doing any modification in your application, you need to relaunch it again and again. If you are adding Spring Dev Tools as a dependency in your application, automatic reload will happen. This dependency has to be used only during the development time, not for production. See this. Whenever you are doing any code changes in your application, the application will automatically restart and your web page will be reloaded. It saves huge development time. To get DevTools support, it is enough you add DevTools as a dependency to your application. Now your application will automatically restart whenever you are doing any code changes. We will move on to the next feature. Profiles. Profiles helps to work in different environment specific configuration. Let's say I want to work in three different configurations, development, testing and production, which means I have got three different profiles. For these profiles, I can have my own set of configuration files. As in, for development application hyphen dev dot properties or application hyphen dev dot yml, application hyphen prod dot properties or application hyphen prod dot yml. So, in my application, I am having three profiles dev, test, and prod. Based on the profile that is selected, the appropriate configuration file should be chosen. That can be done with the help of this particular line. When you are running your application, how do you run your application? Java hyphen jar, your jar file name, followed by you can pick and choose the profile with which you want to work. Spring profiles active, that is prod. Now I can pick and choose the corresponding configuration. 
by using this particular line spring profiles dot active prod which means the production configuration file will be selected guys for this profiles also i have given a youtube video you can just go and watch it to understand about profiles in detail the next feature is externalized configuration i don't want to add hard coded values in my application as in i don't want to provide the username password the url of the database with which i am going to connect to or i don't want to provide the security username and password in our for my spring boot application all these informations can be pushed to an application dot properties file or yml file which means i am externalizing the configuration details even the port number of my application i can push it to the configuration file by default we are using tomcat server it will run in port number 8080 if you want to change the port number you don't have to hard code it you can push it to the configuration file this one you will see in detail when you are working with microservices okay you can see the yaml file the port number and the data source specific properties we will move on to the next feature built in validation jsr 380 or hibernate validator whenever you are working with rest api when the input is coming from the client it is mandatory that we need to validate the input before sending it to the service layer that can be achieved with the help of hibernate validator the dto object that is entering into the rest api has to be validated for this we are working with hibernate validator and few annotations that belong to hibernate validator not null email size not blank min max there are so many annotations available guys i have also given a video about how to do validation in a spring boot application using hibernate validator you can watch that to understand about validations in detail if you are already working in validations then well and good for performing validation you need to do three steps first step is add spring boot starter validation as dependency the second step is go to the dto and add the appropriate annotations not null email size min max not blank all the relevant annotations can be added to the dto class once this is done go to the controller wherever you are using the dto object which is coming inside as a request body you need to add at valid annotation this is enough to validate the request that is coming into the rest api this is one of the important feature of spring boot we will move on to the next feature easy integration with security guys already i have told you the moment i add spring security as a dependency to my spring boot application the corresponding beans needed for the application will be configured automatically but still if i want to work with the third party libraries like oauth2 or jwt that support also is provided by spring boot for authenticating and authorizing your application spring boot security auth simplifies authentication using jwt oauth2 and social login so this is how we will be providing the configuration details for spring security so guys these are the top 10 spring boot features that is mandatory to be known for every person who is learning spring or working in spring boot application okay guys i hope it is clear i have just given about the details about the features that you are supposed to learn if you guys are interested to know about certain topics in spring and spring boot do share it in the comments i will make a video on that see you in another video thank you